The shocking truth about the dying star in space. James Webb Telescope Terrifying Discovery Why is a star dying? How was it discovered? By whom? And what does this mean for the future of our universe? Have you heard of a dying star in the Milky Way on top of us? It's true, but only if you are looking at it. The star is more than 10 times more distant than you think, and even though it is incredibly bright, it is not visible to the naked eye unless you go out of your way to get there. An incredible shot from the James Webb Telescope has shown a star dying like never before. What would a Southern Ring Nebula explain to us regarding the end of the Sun? The Southern Ring Nebula appears like an explosion went off in the open sea, causing a tidal wave that moves away into the inky blackness. Light from space looks like the shades of a lapis rock just seem to fill a massive hole in space. The Southern Ring Nebula is a planetary nebula, a form of entity. A dying star threw these bright dust and gas shells into space. This famous planetary nebula is about 2,000 light years away from Earth. Some stars save the best for last, NASA stated. The dimmer star at the center of this scene has been sending out rings of gas and dust for thousands of years in all directions. And NASA's James Webb Space Telescope has revealed for the first time that this star is cloaked in dust. NASA researchers were overjoyed to show off the new pictures from the James Webb Space Telescope at an event. They stated, well, this is a star that is dying. It had lost its outer surface layers which looked like sea foam made of hydrogen molecules. However, for nervous Nellies worldwide, looking at this planetary nebula 2,000 light years away might not have made them happy. Instead, it might have made them worry about what's to show up. A journalist for the Washington Post named Jules Ackenbach might have felt the same way. Are we sad about the star dying? He questioned the specialist at a news press conference on Tuesday that was shown on TV. Then there were giggles. But it really is simple to think of the Seventh Ring Nebula tale as the star's fate, published in the stars. For the past six months, because James Webb was launched into orbit, NASA has been claiming that this telescope would smash access to the cosmos with its sharp perception and scientific competencies, revealing the truth about how everything started. The scientists who got a quick glimpse at the initial pictures told journalists they got goosebumps or let out a scary sigh when they observed a few of the earliest galaxies. But the response to how everything ends could be just as interesting as the tale of how everything began. The dying star huffs and puffs. Each cloud, circle, shrinks the star until its center is just a white dwarf comprised of carbon and oxygen. It will get chillier. The brightness would finally go out. Giant stars go supernova and then crumble into a black hole. But a standard-sized star such as the one that makes a planetary nebula starts running out of nuclear fuel and dies in a more painful way. It's not just any star. It's a star that is much like the sun at least like the Sun will be in 5 billion years when the Sun dies. Astronomer Klaus Pontapadon from the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore said this, The picture is one of the space's first images from the $10 billion observatory. It looks like the researchers really happened to highlight the telescope in the correct direction at the proper time to observe a disaster. And yes, the 10,000 years that this stage has been going on are nothing compared to the 13.8 billion years that the universe has been around. But discovering it was not a happy accident. The Southern Ring Nebula, also known as NGC 3132, has been known to astrophysicists since well before milk was made to stay fresh. As scientists learned more, they saw that planetary nebula, which really don't have any connection to planets despite their name, are the dying stages of moderate stars. In the Milky Way, researchers have identified just a few thousand of them. The Carina Nebula is a cloud of gas and dust in space. A few of the most beautiful places in space are nebulae. They are large clouds of gas and dust, just like the ones that form when a big star explodes. They are places where new stars can grow. Webb took a picture of the huge Carina Nebula, about 7,600 light years away and where big stars have also already begun to develop. This landscape of mountains and valleys, speckled with glittering stars, is actually the edge of a nearby, young, star-forming region called NGC 3324 in the Carina Nebula, NASA stated. 
This picture, taken by NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope, using infrared light, shows where stars are being born for the very first time. The space agency said that the largest peaks you can observe are about seven light years large. In 1968, the British astronomer David S. Evans thought there might be two stars just at the center of this nebula, though only one would have been hidden by dust and gas. The big surprise about Webb's picture, which was taken 54 years ago, is that the telescope's mid-infrared device lets us see the fainter star, which is the actual cause of the nebula, in great detail. Researchers were amazed by how much detail was on screen. Rich, flat pins of light lined the corners. Those would be flares of light coming from central stars. They look like pictures of God depicted in the Bible, or rays of light coming through clouds after just a hurricane. Paul Sutter, a research scientist at Stony Brook University and the writer of How to Die in Space, said the sun is midway to the southern ring's end. Scientists have tried to figure out how old the sun is by examining various types of stars multiple times. Sutter says to believe in it, like taking photographs of individuals at different points in their lives, like when they are born, play Little League, get sick, get married, or die. These findings are combined with scientists' knowledge of how the sun's core works. It turns out our sun is middle-aged. It's going through a midlife crisis right now. It just bought a Corvette and is worried about its retirement fund. It's right there, Sutter said. In astrophysics, staring somewhere further means looking into history because light and many other types of radiation have to move so far to get to us. It is also possible that perhaps the Southern Rings light display has already ended because the white dwarf that used to light it up can no longer do so. And although Rodolfo Montez, who analyzes dying sun-like stars at the Center for Astrophysics at Harvard and the Smithsonian, says it's likely still going on, even if it's getting dimmer. Scientists have discovered far too many unusual, non-spherical forms in such celestial frameworks caused by a second central star. This makes them curious if the second central star is a significant element of how they are made. It's called a binary hypothesis, which would suggest that only stars in binary systems make planetary nebulae. But then we're not clear what single stars like our sun would do in that framework, Montez said. Just one more puzzle for Webb to solve. The Southern Ring Nebula has a dying star that sends out waves. These waves carry materials through space like microbes. Those last breaths will shape particles and make new things appear in the universe. Scientists say the stars are assembly plants that make elements. For example, they end up making carbon, that is the same compound that people and most life on our planet are made of. Are we upset that the star is going to die? Pantapadon replied in a roundabout way. His response was scientific, but it nearly actually sounds divine. He said, this is the end for the star but it's the beginning for other stars and other planetary systems. That's all for today's video. If you like this video, visit our channel to watch more content like this. Make sure to hop on the wagon by subscribing and turning on notifications. See you next time. Bye-bye.